All right guys, welcome back to the channel. So I'm gonna show you what we got today. We've got a massive, beautiful Thunderjet boat here. Sucker is brand new. And the customer has some modifications they want me to make to it. So I'll just give you guys a look at how big and beautiful this thing is. That is the ultimate fishing boat, or at least for around here. So, let's show you guys what we got. I'm gonna climb aboard and I'll show you. This thing is ridiculous. It's got a fish cleaning station here, live well. There is a full cabin and you can drive the boat either inside the cabin or outside the cabin. All right, so here's what the customer wants. He had me come over to his house the other day. The boat came with these plates right here and he mounts his downrigger to that. He wants another plate here that's gonna be the exact same design as that one, but he wants another one here so he can run a downrigger there and there. So they'll be able to run four downriggers at a time. So it looks like some 10 gauge material here. We'll go ahead and take some 10 gauge. We'll break it to the exact same design specs and then we'll come up and we'll weld it on exactly the same as they did. So shouldn't be too tough. And then once we get that done, we've got this little bracket here. This is called a transom saver. And what it does is that little crutch right there mounts onto the outdrive down there so that when you're transporting the boat, your motor's not bouncing up and down. And usually it can cause cracks in the transom and eventually break off and cause an accident on the highway. So. We don't want that, so he wants me to put some brackets underneath so that we can put that on. So we'll take a look at that once we get to that point, but let's get started on our downrigger bracket. All right guys, so we got some aluminum loaded up on the table here. I'm gonna get these drafted up and burned, cleaned up and ready to break. When we get ready to break, we'll come back to you guys and we'll show you guys what we got. Beautiful. All right, let's head over to the brake. All right, guys, so we're getting the brake all booted up here. I do have my plates here. Get me a suntan. So the fab shop that I learned from, we would always have to lay it out and then break it because it was a manual press brake. So you would have to slide it in. You would drop the knife right on your line. You would have to calculate the offsets and everything. This machine is changing all that. Those are not skills that I want to lose. I will still use them because I still have my press brake attachment over there that I will use for odds and ends. But understanding this side of fabrication is, is also very helpful. I'm not gonna walk through all this because I don't really feel like anybody needs to know that unless you own a machine. I will explain quickly what kind of settings I have to change one of the first things you have to do is you enter your angles, your material thickness. This is aluminum, so I actually change the bend pressure because it requires less bend pressure. I will change my measurement for where the back gauge comes in. I'll change how high the knife comes up after I make my break. There's actually a setting where I will change the back gauge setting so that once, I, once the knife meets the material, the back gauge will slightly move out of the way so that it doesn't snag this material and pinch it while it's bending it. 
those are the main settings that I have to change. If I was making 20 of these, I'd probably, I would probably create a file and I would run this in automatic mode where all I have to do is hit the pedal and I would make the first bend. Then I would flip it around and it would make the second bend. Then I would flip it around and make the third bend and then it'd be done. And the machine would just do that. And all I would have to do is flip it around and push it against the back gauge. I'm going to run this in semi-automatic mode and that's where I'll put in all three angles and I will hit the pedal and hold the pedal to make the knife come down and make the bend. There's also a manual bend mode where you have to do everything just like, just like I've always done and just like I've done at previous jobs because I've never really ran a CNC press brake until now. We'll go ahead and we'll get our information put in, we'll make these bends and then I'll show you what we end up with. The first thing we need to do is we need to home the machine. I'll go ahead and I'll start the machine. It's, it's sizing the RAM, so you hit the start button. So the back gauge is going to zero itself, and then the RAM is going to size itself so that it knows how much stroke it's got. It needs to know where zero is, so you're basically homing the machine. Okay, so we're good. Now. To home the RAM, I hit the up button and then it will home itself. So now we'll go ahead and stop that while we put in our information. I'm going to put that in now. When I get all the information put back in, we'll come back to you. This takes me a minute because I'm still pretty new at it. All right, guys, so we got our bends put in. There's two bends that we've put in and we're going to run them on semi-automatic mode. I've already hit the start button. The back gauge has moved into position. So it's set to three and three quarter which is right and on this machine on this programming 180 degrees is zero I was confused about that when I first got the machine because I tried to make a 30 degree bend on something <clears throat> and it wouldn't let me put it in so I ended up calling Iroquois and they told me that the way they've set up the programming in this 180 degrees or flat piece of metal which is 180 is what they're calling it. They're calling it 180 degrees. That's zero. If there's no bend, a flat piece of metal, instead of it being zero and bending it to 30, you call this 180 and then you deduct whatever angle you need. So if I needed a 30 degree, I would input 150. And then that would give me my 30 degrees. So it is a little bit confusing, but as far as I understand, that's the way this PLC works. And this PLC is used on multiple brands of CNC press brakes. So I, I assume that that's just the way it is. I don't know why it's that way, but it's just one of those things where you learn how the machine runs and then once you know, you know. So we're ready to do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the pump. We'll start it up and then we'll push down to do our first, our first bend. This first bend is 28 degrees. So now I'm going to check it with my angle finder and make sure that that is in fact 28 degrees. Okay, so we're a little shy. So I'm going to go, I'm going to adjust this real quick. I'm going to go another 5 degrees on that. Okay, now we're going to bend it. Put it back in, hit the pedal, gonna hit start first. That is almost right on the money. We went about a degree too far. So I'm actually gonna knock this back down. Usually with the first part, this is kind of what you have to do. There's a lot of variables that go into breaking material. The grain of the material, which I've never even dealt with any of that. I've never thought about it because with a manual press break, you just break it until it's where you need it to be. But the grain, 
hopefully you guys can see that the grain on this is actually running this way if it was running opposite it would be harder to bend it would re require more force so with the first part that you bend typically you have to do this and kind of tweak it to get it perfect and then if you got more than one part it should be just aces after that all right so now that i've changed my angle there i'm going to go ahead and do my next bend so now i just hit next bend push start the back gauge moves and now we'll break our other angle now this one is going to be a 90 degree I'm going to check that as well and make sure that that is what we want. It looks very close to a 90. So I'm going to grab my square and check that real quick. So this one's just a hair out as well. I'm going to tweak this one. Go into the editor. Bend correction. We're going to go negative 3. We'll go negative 2. Baby steps. Okay. Then I'm going to go back, hit start. Bend angles just about perfect. This one's within a degree that's close enough for what we're doing. So now that we've got our bend set, I'm gonna throw the other one in and it should be a slam dunk on this one. One other thing I'm gonna change, you can see how the knife comes up all the way. You can actually change it in the editor here. We only want this to come up about an inch and a half. All right, so the camera went ahead and died somewhere in there, so that's cool. But I did do the first bend on my second piece and I wanna show you guys how accurate this is. Hopefully you can see that, but it is right on the money. That is exactly 28 degrees. So we did get our bends tweaked. So now I'm gonna move to my second bend, hit the arrow, hit the green button, back gauge moves, and then you hit the pedal. how we did on our 90 right on the money okay so now we have two parts that are built exactly the same I'm gonna double check my measurements but those are right on the money Machine's a game changer. All right, so now that our parts are broke, all that we've got to do is roll the Dynasty out, probably clean up the material we're going to be welding to, wipe it down with some acetone, and we'll go ahead and get these tacked on and weld it out. So when we get to that point, we'll come back to you. All right. Bridger's climbing aboard. We've got our parts all broke and ready to go. Dynasty's hooked up. We swapped our consumables out, went back to the Pyrex cup. I believe it's a number seven, might be a number eight. Eighth inch tungsten, we did ball it a little bit on the end. Uh, we're running 275 amps on the machine, but I am running the pedal. And we're using eighth inch 4043 TIG rod. We are gonna wipe it down with acetone first, which we haven't done. So Bridger's gonna run grab that, we'll wipe it down. And then once we're ready to tack it, we'll come back. All right, so it's probably a little cramped up here. You guys probably aren't gonna be able to see a whole lot of what's going on, but we're just gonna get this tacked and then in position, I'll have him help me tack both sides. And then once they're tacked, he'll go back to doing what he's doing and I can weld them out.
Okay, so I'm sure somebody's gonna make a comment or ask. So yes, we've disconnected the batteries. There's probably $30,000 worth of electronics on this boat. And yes, we've disconnected the batteries, turned the breakers off, just so everyone knows. Okay, we got one tacked in place. Now we'll jump over to the other side and we'll do that one. Oh. All right, we just had the wind blow our gas away, blew right through the door. So now we gotta clean this up with a wire wheel. Hopefully it didn't mess it up too bad that we gotta sit and chase it. So grab me that grinder right there. Well, they're both tacked into place. I wanna make sure that there's nothing up against that. There is some wiring in there, so I wanna make sure there's nothing that's gonna melt if I get that hot. All right, so there is some wiring up in there and it's actually right below where I'm gonna weld right there. So it is in that wire loom stuff, but I don't wanna risk it getting too hot, melting the loom and then melting the wire as well. So I'm gonna clip it so that it's hanging, so that it's got an air gap between the two. Can I reach it is the question. I'm gonna have to do it left-handed, that'll be fun. Okay. Feel better about that. Should be good there. But I do wonder about this other side I'll have to check this other side when we get to that point I think I'm gonna weld this one up first fire in the hole Guys, we'll probably let that cool in between passes. Do one top, one bottom. There's actually not a weld up underneath here on the factory one, so I'm not gonna do that either. But there is two on the base here. So I am gonna let that sit cool for a minute, just so, to, so that it doesn't heat this area up too much. I'll probably bounce over to this one, do the same thing. We'll just bounce back and forth, giving it time to cool. And we'll come back and give you guys a look. All right guys, so we're on to our bracket for the transom saver. The camera died in the middle of me welding the brackets up. So I'll show you guys those once I get them done, all cleaned up. But we are on to our bracket for our transom saver mount. So I'll show you guys what I got cooked up here. So you can see it's just a bracket. The center hole is gonna be the hole that mounts it to the trailer. These two holes are where the pin's gonna go through. I'm gonna break it right on these corners here and here. So we'll go ahead and burn this and then we'll go over the break and break it. I'll show you guys what we got. All right guys, so I got my bracket here. Stain the steel. This, I can't just stick this in the brake against the back gauge now. I have to lay out some marks on it. So I've put some marks and then I'm gonna draw a line with the square so I can keep my bend square. Because there's not a square edge, I need to lay it out and make sure that the knife lands exactly on the mark. Ooh. 
Oof, money. All right. It's a little bit, see how it's just a little bit open? It's not exactly 90. The good news is I have a gooseneck die and that allows this leg when you bend it to have clearance. This one, there was just not quite enough. You can see there's a little bit of a valley here now. So what you can do is stick this back in the press and just bump it. And if I put it in manual, now it'll go slow. And if I just baby it, you're gonna get a little bit of spring back, so you gotta just take your time and baby it. A little bit more. And I don't know if you noticed, but I'm going back and forth, switching sides. Perfect. Okay. So you can see the bolt in the center, that's gonna mount underneath and it will span the trailer. So we'll be able to tighten that up and that will hold this bracket in place. And then our tube will come in here. They'll run the pin through there. Bam, done. But you can see how professional you can make things look just by having the right equipment. This thing's freaking game changer. All right guys, so here's what we got. Got our little bracket here and I'm just utilizing the bolt that was already here gonna slide this on put the washer on and then put the nylock on the only thing we may have to do is we may have to modify the bolt meaning cut a little bit off so that we can get our piece of tube in there I'll show you what I mean once I get this tightened up okay and it looks like we are gonna have to modify that I'm just gonna drive this back in. This is gonna do one of two things. So it's gonna hold the bolt where we need it to be. It's gonna hold it steady while we cut it. The other thing it's gonna do is, I can kind of get a pretty good idea on where I need to cut it, just to give me enough room. Plus after looking at it, it's about 3 eighths of an inch. All right, let's try it again. So you wanna make sure your bolt goes past the nylon on your nylock. If it doesn't, it's not gonna work the way it's supposed to, it's gonna come loose. Hey, they didn't give me the pin I think this is gonna work. So if I had the pin, I'd put the pin in here in our little bracket. There's another pin or bolt that goes in this one. You adjust this to where it needs to be. We got the bracket on. He can, he can hook this up now. I think he's in business. So I do have some cleanup to do on the downrigger brackets. Once I get the cleanup done, we'll give you guys a final look. So here's our brackets, we got them all cleaned up. Kind of hard to see. You see we got it all polished up. We took some Scotch-Brite and we buffed it the same grain. We got everything blended in. So now it looks just like the factory one. We got both of them done.
all cleaned up. So now he can run four downriggers instead of two. So that's gonna wrap up another video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We've been extremely busy in the shop lately, so we haven't uploaded any YouTube videos. I apologize, but that's kind of the first thing that has to go when we're this busy. So appreciate you guys watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. See you on the next one.